So welcome back to another edition of the Bones of Advertising, number one for 2021. We're pissing off 2020. I'm Craig McLeod and you still are. I am excited. Holy <laughs> shit, like Big Kev, day one, you're excited. I am I am more pumped than an overblown tyre. <laughs> That's a lot of air, mate. I am. I'm, well, I'm, my friends will tell you that I'm full of air and... Sometimes, sometimes not in a good way, but that's a different conversation for a different day. <laughs> uh, How are you, mate? How's your break? Uh, look, <clears throat> I've got to say it was fantastic. I don't think we've really had a summer down here uh, as yet in Melbourne, sort of Victoria, but mate, there is, uh, there's no such thing as a bad holiday in my, my book. So uh, it was absolutely cracking. How was yours? It was, um, it was, it was so relaxing. Yeah. Like, oh, I managed to get because because I I get to I get pulled kind of you know yeah, the place. Yeah. anyone anyone with a sixteen year old and a fourteen year old will know that the your spend your weekends being a taxi and so the 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 holidays become just a little bit of a, a a relaxing time. So I managed to have I managed to have two weeks where I did virtually nothing. Wow. So which is a very rare thing for me. So, very rare for you. Yeah. You are the active, active man of, yeah. uh, of the, the family. You're very, very, you're active both mentally and physically, which I love. Was there a bit of golf? There was a, there was a bit of golf, as, as you would know. We, we spent a bit of time down at the, uh, at the new, uh, and, and here's a free plug for the uh, Sandringham Golf Course. That new golf course, that's, um, for a public golf course, that's quite spectacular. Oh, pretty, quite like pretty special. Um, and lots of uh, lots of people out there. I took uh, my son has has decided that he also likes golf. So uh, beautiful. That's yeah, a good thing. We, uh, we digress. We're not here to talk about oh, talk about my perfect nine iron or my uh, or my magnificent fifty foot putt. We're here to talk about advertising. We are so, yeah. to talk about advertising. And I know there's something special that you want to talk about today. And I'm um, I'm feeling that it could be something that's quite interesting. So let's uh, let's launch straight in, JD. What do you got yeah. for me? I would like to talk about the creative bubble. Is this a bone, JD, or is this the meat on the bone? Or well, the bone is actually wankers. Oh. Advertising. Are you talking about wanker. me? No, no, no. <laughs> no, my friend. No, you're far too smooth to be a wanker. No. <laughs> I love it. The world is full of wankers. Yes. But one of the reasons that um, uh, that so many uh, creative advertising agencies and marketing clients, I believe, yep. fall into this area of what's it, what would be the wankerism, Wank, wankerishness. Anyway, wankerism. Anyway. Let's just call it wankerism. Wankerism. Um, my, my is just the bone we picked today, love. What did you do today, Craig? Well, the bone we picked today, we picked over a bone called wankism. <laughs> oh, I, think I love it. Because too many people, including marketing professionals, live inside a creative bubble. And so they all get their inspiration from the same places that other people are getting their inspiration from. So they all go and see the same art house movies. They all go and um, uh, hang out in the same bars. They all share the same stories. They all aspire to win the awards that other people have won. And the way they win those awards is by doing similar work to the work that those people have done. And clients look at strategies that have already been proven to be successful and so they just copy those and they insert their brand name in them without actually digging down into what really should work for them specifically so it, and it, just, it just goes around and around and around like that bloody motorcycle in the in a, in a wheel of death you know <laughs> oh, oh. are you saying there's no such no such thing as a new idea at the moment in this particular space we're talking about, that there's just a whole lot of re-churned out stuff. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying a lot of it starts to look exactly the same. And a lot of it is um, there are there are digital wankers. So there are people who firmly believe that you can you can um, 
you can get, if you look at the data, the data will get you what you want. And so the data leads us more and more to, if we run this, people will click it. If we run this, people will click it. As the great Dave Trott once said, there's no point in inviting a million people into a boardroom if you don't have a show to put on when they get there. And so, so a lot of digital is very good at getting people to websites and getting people to take the next click. Yep. But what are they engaging with once they get there? Yep. But that's a, that's, let's, let's jump off that bridge another day. Okay. I want to talk about, I want to talk, <laughs> you'll love this <laughs> because I believe you are, you are a fan of the, uh, of the bird. Um, I want to talk about two frighteningly similar ads, which by my mind, shouldn't be running at the same time. But yes, so two campaigns currently or, or potentially recently on yep. in our- Both still screen. running. Both are... still running. I saw them on TV last night. I watched a bit of telly and, and they're on. So um, did somebody say menu log? Did somebody say menu log? Snoop Dogg. Yep. yep. What an absolute genius of a man. I love him. Did oh, and it's just like, you just can't like, you know. Love it. You feel your shoulders go when you start. Yep. And just a second, you see him on screen. It just, everything just gets cool. Yep. And then at the same time, did someone say KFC? Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. And they both. They both came out of the UK. The KFC one came first, about 2018, I think. Yep. And then uh, and then Menu Log came out 2019, early 2020. So, right. Um, and it just sort of seems like if you if that's going to be your tagline, sure. I mean, it would be like it'd be like uh, when you when you remember when um, uh, Commonwealth Bank was which bank, and everyone was like which bank. And everyone knew what that was. Yep. Imagine if AZ came out and said, what bank? <laughs> At the same time. It's like... Well, basically, yeah, almost identical stuff. So what, what do you think, why has this happened? And do you think whoever was the follower, so in this instance, let's say menu log, do you think they did the due diligence to see what was going on in market and A, found it and didn't give a shit and went with it anyway because they thought it was apt or B... Yeah, like Sherlock Holmes. Look at you. Look at you with your bloody with your deer stalker hat and your pipe. Yeah, I think I'm more yeah. Watson though than you're more Sherlock. I'm a Watson, so I'm the one that's kind of coming in behind and doing some of the the dirty work while you do all the smart work. But no. anyway, do you think no. they they found it, JD? As I said, and didn't give a shit, or do you think they actually didn't do the due diligence and didn't find it? I think in this case, it's a case of them not giving a shit. I think they piggyback the idea because menu log is about getting stuff delivered and they've liked that did someone say, and everyone's going, KFC? No, no. Did someone say menu log? And then they've used that. It's been successful and they've just used it and used it and used it. It's like that Toyota Leap, you know, that was meant for one campaign and it's been running for 25 years. Yeah, and uh, it's become an icon of everything in Toyota, you know, it basically yeah. sits as a shadow above the brand in lots of executions. Yeah, yeah. So I think the I think in this case it's a they've seen it and they don't give a shit. But JD, is that because they believe they're bigger than KFC as a brand? And again, we'll get to your point, which is extremely valid, but do they believe menu log, we're a global brand, you know, we, we can afford global superstars? Um, no, I think it's a um, I think they are the challenger in this instance, and I think they've seen something that has worked for one of the leaders in the category. Um, although, you know, menu log is, it's a, although it's food, it's a delivery service, so it's slightly different, but they've seen something done by a leader in a adjacent category. Mm. And they've just decided, well, we'll use that and we'll get attention for it. But the one thing that forgives it is they've actually done it really well. Like, yeah. yeah, it's just so, I think the point being that you're making there is they really have done it better. Like the budget was ridiculously good and, and all of the different executions that have come that have sort of followed through that campaign, you know, like 
pretty exceptional. Whereas you look at the KFC execution and, and it's good, but definitely not at that level. But I guess that's probably where they position themselves as well. They don't have to be this kind of, you know, yeah. absolute superstar because you've got that food delivery space where, you know, Uber, Uber Eats, I imagine is still number one, you know, Deliveroo's yeah. kind of right up there and menu yeah. log. Um, menu I mean, log all trying to make a name for themselves. They're trying yeah. to get, they are trying to get noticed. The, the interesting thing, I think is that KFC have got two campaigns on in the market at the same time. And that just smacks of marketing laziness. It's like, we've got this, we've got this, this, this line. Did someone say KFC? Like, you know, oh, someone's fucked up. And oh, am I allowed to say that on air? Yes, I can, because it's our podcast. Anyway. <laughs> I think you said pucked up, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Someone mucked up. Someone mucked up. <laughs> um, someone mucked up. Um, the, <laughs> The piece is, uh, I think someone's just gone, someone's just been lazy and, and, and said, we've got this lovely campaign. Uh, did someone say KFC? Like, and the whole premise is someone mucked up. Oh, hang about, how about them Richmond Tigers? Look over there, KFC, everyone's happy. Yep. And then they've also got the shut up and take my money. Yeah. Which is a delightful. The first time I saw it was, I think it's an American campaign. It was, oh, it was run. Reason. There was a whole lot of um, people in an old age home, and it's that. Shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. And it's like. What are they talking about? And then you see it, and then all of a sudden it's a party, and everyone's happy, and and it's all terrific. I think there's a, I think there is a, um, that to me is people not wanting to make either not wanting to make a hard decision, or someone two global um, uh, owners, two global bosses saying you'll run this campaign or you'll run this campaign, or the local the local marketing people saying. We'll just take that one and we'll take that one. And someone will have said in a meeting somewhere, but they're different. And the person will go, but they're free. <laughs> so, JD, remember back to an episode we did where we talked about the ability for you to build brand and be tactical in one execution. Is this yep. an instance where they're using, did somebody say KFC to work on brand and then yep. shut up and take my money from a tactical point of view? Could, could we forgive them for that in the instance of having two campaigns running? One is the overarching brand. So potentially trying to steal market share from competitors, Red Rooster and McDonald's in that sort of you know, yep. fast service turnaround potential. And then the other could potentially be tactical around specific offers, you know, like I think the shut up and take my money might be around when you see a zinger on a, a billboard and they look at it and just yeah. like, holy shit, shut up and take my money. That looks yeah. awesome. So maybe, is that something we could potentially look at? No, it could have if the shut up and take my money finished with, did someone say KFC? Right, so connected in the same execution. I think that the only reason they would they would the only way they would work as an umbrella and then a tactical piece is if the tactical piece linked back to did someone say KFC? Mm. And, and I don't and I don't believe it does. I'm gonna I'm gonna round this out. Yes. This little you piece. Do. You are the genius amongst us. I'm gonna round this out by leaving you with a visual you will not be able to get out of your head. Beautiful thing. The next time you look at the Colonel Sanders logo, the new one, he's got, it's just his head with a little bow tie. Yep. If you look at the bow tie closely, it's just a tiny little stick figure body. So every time you see it now, all you can see is this massive head and this little kind of <laughs> body. Well, I look forward to, to getting that edited into the podcast, KD, so that everyone that, uh, that watches the vlog version of our podcast can see this guy. And yeah. anyone who tunes in on, uh, on Spotify, on, on, on uh, all of those places where you can watch our podcast, yeah. they'll have to actually find their way to the vlog to see it. But uh, yeah. is that another edition of The Bones of Advertising already done 2021, or have you got any something else for us? No, I have a feeling. I have a feeling that may be, uh, that may be it. I'm, um, uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to insinuate myself into the rest of my day and um uh, i hope that your uh, that your day and your weekend is uh, is magnificent and uh and you stay 
are both upright and upbeat. I will indeed. And don't go changing, JD. That's another edition of the Bones of Advertising. I'll see you next week. Did someone say KFC? Ha, ha, ha.